Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. Here you can see in my shop new customer. It's a 2010 Toyota Matrix. It has 144,000 miles on the clock and the customer started. He purchased it recently and started taking care of this baby. In previous video I showed you around. He apparently got one drain and refill elsewhere at some oil company, whatever. And they recommended him to do it one more time soon. Well, the fluid which came out, it's so nasty and so bad that I made decision in the previous video with you. I'm assuming most of you supported that decision. To go all the way and instead of doing another drain and a refill because it's really bad instead of trying to flush it the decision was made that we will remove that pan with the rubber gasket which is there we will remove and replace the filter which is inside you can imagine how contaminated that filter is too so there is 19 10 millimeter bolts and what I do personally I always use the manual tool first I want to feel the torque there's nothing wrong with it it wasn't seeping on anything but because these bolts on oh, this one is way difficult more difficult than the other ones so far because they are in the aluminum body of the transmission this was very loose I like to feel the torque instead of using the power tool immediately it is U341E as you can see hopefully I put you in the right place as you can see all the bolts are easily accessible with a simple simple wobble 10 millimeter this is what i meant that some people will use the power tools only at least obviously on the removal you can imagine it's always the same problem where can i put you as a camera and where can I also keep some space for myself? <laughs> now, after you remove all the 19 10 millimeter bolts, you might be surprised how come that pen is still attached to the transmission, right? You're like, well, it should be falling off. Right? But it's because these heat cycles which are happening as it is being driven for all those years that rubber kind of becomes like a glue and they are sticking together. So in some good spot where you will not damage uh, the pan, which is in my case right in the back, I'm prying on that very edge of that steel pan only uh, because I don't want to scratch the surfaces and create possible leaks in the future which that rubber gasket will be not able to deal with. I'm carefully separating that pan from the transmission. Now look at it. Here we go. This is it. I just got it off. Basically nicely popped off. And yes, it continues with this absolutely black, horrible fluid, which we saw, which was coming, we were draining out of that pan. So I will need to dry myself again and I will grab that camcorder and show you how black and nasty it is. It's pretty amazing and it completely perfectly confirms our decision to go all the way also for these who are new 
you keep, you will keep seeing it dripping all right so right now we are observing this is the filter when we will remove i believe three bolts holding that filter and drop it there will be another continuity of that fluid coming out of the transmission's valve body so that's why you have these catching pans everywhere i cannot put that camera below it i'm trying to show you as much as i can without getting any drips in that lens so look at this this is super awesome i have prepared our workplace right here so let's go i will just transfer what we just drop and you can hopefully observe it nicely right here so what is important for us is a carefully remove this rubber gasket. Now, you don't want to be scraping that pan with any sharp razor blades and so on, because it's in the perfect shape. And I don't want to make any cuts in this surface, which will be in that entire time sealing that transmission fluid inside. We don't want to have any seepage, so I'm always very careful about this. That's why I told you <clears throat> when you are prying apart, don't start shoving the tool all the way in and bending this pan that will be definitely a mistake which you will pay for later so that was the gasket and you know i mentioned the word magnets one magnet second one they are in the different places there is a reason why they are here so when you will remove them Please remember where they were and put them back. Now hopefully you can see that, what I call a mud, and these are super fine metal shavings. And what I see right here, I can tell you that transmission is in the good shape. This will be only preventative maintenance, because the amount of shavings is relatively small. Also, they are super fine. Larger and larger these shavings will become. Uh, it will uh, clearly indicate the problem inside of tranny. So one magnet and the second one is right there. They are identical. So you can uh, mix them up. That doesn't matter. Just put them exactly in the same spot really important there are strategic areas the designers knew where to put it and here is the second one right so now we have that super thick goo inside of this pan and this all needs to be removed look at it oh yeah this all needs to go you see the color, the change? These are another microscopic, very fine shavings. And the designers, finally, we got that, I call it mud, super fine particles, the shavings. Finally, we got it all gone. It's perfectly gone. And this is the first time I can show you that designers actually made these imprints in the pan can see these corners depending as I'm turning it so the magnets which are perfectly clean and there's no contamination on them can be installed back they're hard to clean because obviously it's all metal and it keeps trying to stick to it but yeah they are clean and besides the rubber gasket, this pan is ready to be reinstalled. 
And let's go back to the transmission to the vehicle and continue with removal of that filter from the valve body. So again, I did the same thing. I cracked those just to make sure I don't strip anything with a power tool. Now I just remove three additional 10 millimeters again, but with less mass. So look at this. Now I will drop it because the three bolts are down. Do you remember what I said? It will come with more fluid. Now we have to pay attention that all this should be O-ring. Sure enough, I hope you saw it. Right there, you have to always make sure that O-ring is being removed and replaced with that old nasty plugged filter. This is new situation. You can finally see the valve body, which is great opportunity for me to show you in the detail. However, again, I will not place that camera below, so it will drip on it. Here is the removed old filter. I put that O-ring on it. You can probably see it. And the new parts are actually all prepared here. Those three long bolts holding the filter are the same length, so you don't need to worry about mismatching them or doing something wrong. Here is a new filter, here is the new o-ring, here is the pen with a new gasket. After it was dripping for a while, it's time to start putting everything back. I saw in past working with other people or next to them, let's say. I saw in past some techs will take a brake clean and spray the heck out of this valve body. I don't do it personally because brake clean is actually pretty aggressive. I don't want to have anything like that inside of this transmission and, and touching the wires on the sensors and so on. So I'm um, not worrying that I'm leaving still some old fluid inside that's absolutely understood. But that's fine. We are doing max, maximum for this. So new filter. We have new o-ring, rubber o-ring. I don't have to lube it because everything is still wet with that tra transmission fluid. I will also feel it if it nicely comes in or not. And I can actually even see it from here. Oh yeah. So you probably heard that pop. The new filter is in the place. And the fluid, the old fluid, will start dripping in it, right? It starts entering the new filter. That's totally fine. As we said, if you do this service to your vehicle, I will always applaud to you. I think because that rubber gasket on the pan, I think that's pretty doable for everybody. It's nothing complicated. All you have to do, just maybe put the front wheels on the ramp, create a space for yourself to get underneath it. All of us observe the safety. This is in the aluminum valve body. Don't yank on these bolts too much. Use a small torque. When I was releasing it, the loosening torque was very small, so very carefully torque this. Yep, this is perfect. We will be ready. We are ready to install the pan with the new gasket. I think 
I'm ready to install this pan with a new gasket, clean magnets back on the transmission body. Put those, you remember still? 19, 10 millimeter bolts back and start filling up this baby with a new fluid. This is always a little bit tricky. Always pay attention to the frets. You never want to cross fret anything. I accidentally touched the scale, went down to seven. So you see, oh yeah, here, here, and I'm just making sure everything is up to spec. Yep, I've been here, this should be tight already. These, are, these ones I'm just rechecking. So you got, you got idea how it works, right? But in general, the torque is very small, guys. Definitely will be a mistake to over torque it. How is this side? Didn't reach anything yet. Is it on? Oh yeah, 7.4. So it was close. I'm like, am I giving too early on it? This is how it basically should sound at the very end. You hear that? That's giving me that idea when I go around. I'm just rechecking it. Now I'm not going crisscross anymore. Just rechecking that it's all tight. I will do last wipe off. I recheck that the drain plug is 39 Newton meters. I'm ready to lower this matrix down. And we will start filling. You see, you hear that? How empty it is? Yep. We will start filling that empty transmission with that yummy WS idea from Toyota. Just in front of my eyes. I don't know why I didn't see you. This one is definitely from Walmart, I think. Or O'Reilly, I'm not sure. I bought so many in the past. Oh yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can feel it. This is way better fit. You still have to pour it very slowly, so you don't have a leak right here, and it will start following the tube, and it will be all over down there. You definitely don't want to do that. So let's go fill, fill her up. And I have here, three quarts of this Toyota ATF WS. Believe it or not, that's all what it was inside. Now you will hopefully finally see that different color. Do you see how beautifully red and bright, almost pinkish. When it's inside of the funnel, it's pinkish. So you are pouring it slowly, you see me, because you want to avoid that leak right here when the funnel meets the dipstick tube, right? So you don't rush this, because it's easier to go slow, then waste time later with difficult and problematic cleaning. Yep, I will let it rest. This gray one really fits good in the tube. And I will continue with the other two. What came out, what came out was 2.8 quarts. I measured it just for curiosity. So basically I recommend to everybody, <clears throat> it's the same transmission, put 2.8, then start up the engine, run the transmission through the gears and so on. And as a final measurement, you will use the dipstick ideally when the engine and transmission fluid is warm or in operating temperature which means basically hot so i have these 2.8 quarts 
there exactly what I drained actually from it so I can put the dipstick back and the basically what's the best for the correct level right let's go on the test drive you might think it's better just to sit here and go start engine go through the gears multiple times with the foot on the brake and then measure right while the engine running you pull the dipstick out and they are cold and warm the notches i'm not sure if you can see them maybe against this blue do you see the notches two on the bottom two on the top well the bottom ones are for the cold condition and the top ones for the hot which means the operating temperature of the transmission i always say better do it when it's hot we know we put very close what was in it and it was shifting perfectly so there's no reason to doubt that that 2.8 quarts will do any possible damage on the test drive that's basically impossible here you can see the damage hood hopefully right that's what happened to it it got damaged but other than that this car is in very good condition so I really hope you find this video helpful. If you enjoy it, give it a thumb up and definitely be subscribed. I have way more coming your way soon. Thank you for watching, supporting this channel, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.